Hey investors, this is the last video for 2020 and what a year it has been. Well, I have mixed feelings about 2020. Of course, we had the pandemic, but in terms of the stock market, the returns have been very good this year. Some of the companies we picked just accelerated their growth due to the pandemic. And those companies will likely continue their growth in the coming years. Although I think my portfolio has done well, I think we can do better next year. I am seeking inspiration from some of the top fund managers who did phenomenally well this year, like ARK Invest and like the Scottish Mortgage Trust. Let's take a look at our portfolio in depth and then we'll also compare our returns against the returns of the best fund managers in the world and we'll draw a few conclusions. I'll also let you know uh, how I'm planning to change the portfolio going forward. So this is how the portfolio stands at the moment. Our top three stocks make up about 44% of the portfolio. And that's quite a concentrated uh, portfolio. I'm looking to diversify away from my mega cap stocks a little. I think I have a mega cap issue. Although I don't see any uh, weakness in these stocks like Amazon, Facebook, uh, and Google, or even Alibaba. I feel that I need to have more smaller cap stocks in my portfolio. I don't just want to have smaller cap stocks for the sake of it. They must be very strong companies, just like how all these companies are very strong companies with a strong economic moat. But if I want to get returns of 50-60% or more, I think uh, it'll be hard to get those kind of returns with my mega cap stocks. So I'm not selling away any of these stocks yet, but it's unlikely I'll buy into uh, these stocks in the future. And if I do buy stocks, it will probably be smaller cap stocks. So these are some of the other stocks we have. The ones in green are basically the stocks that are the movers and shakers of the portfolio because they have a greater uh, weightage in the portfolio. So I think Intuitive Surgical uh, is a relatively smaller cap stock and it's something that I can add on to. Alibaba is also a bit of a mega cap stock so I probably will not add on to it. Although I think right now the price is a little attractive because it fell quite a bit in November. Visa again seems a bit uh, big for me. Uh, booking Holdings I think is going to be slow for the next 1-2 years. So I'm not going to add to it. Uh, then we have Mastercard. Upwork has done phenomenally well this year beyond my expectations. In fact I sold a few covered calls and I actually missed out on some gains from about 200 shares of Upwork. So that's a regret I have to live with. Trillio has done very well, PayPal has done well, Apple and Adobe have also done very well. So I think these are still stocks that I can uh, add on to because they are not very uh, big yet. Uh, Adobe and PayPal maybe, uh, sorry Apple I'm definitely not going to add on to because it's at 2 trillion. Um, but I think Upwork and Trillio are probably some stocks I can consider adding on to. But probably not at the current valuation because they are so high. So going down, uh, we see some other stocks here. Autodesk is a stock I like as well. So I might add on to it. So the ones I've highlighted in blue are basically those stocks that I see potential to add on to. And the ones in yellow are the two uh, indices, the S&P 500 and the Triple Q. So we beat both the S&P 500 and the Triple Q this year. Um, but we have lost out to some of the top fund managers and we'll get into that when we do the comparison. 
So Teladoc is a stock I'm quite interested in, so I'm looking to probably add to my weightage in Teladoc. Baozun, Beyond Meat, uh, even the tech software ETF is something I could add on to. Illumina, uh, DocuSign, uh, are also stocks I'm considering to add to. NVIDIA, I, I like it. I think it's the kingpin of AI or it will be the kingpin of AI. But again, it seems a bit on the large cap to mega cap uh, size for my liking. And that is also the case with Netflix. American Well fell quite a bit in November, so I picked up some shares. And it's also some a stock that I'm keeping an eye on. And I finally bought Bitcoin. I've been watching a lot of videos of Ark Invest and Cathy Wu, and I like her theory on Bitcoin. So I'm opening up a starter position in Bitcoin. So it gets me more interested in it, I read up more about it, and uh, if it falls somewhere, I might even add a bit more to the portfolio. So in total, uh, what a comeback we had in uh, November. The portfolio has crossed the 300k mark. So we almost wanted there in that goal to reach one million dollars. So 2019 we did well, but 2020, as I mentioned, has been a blowout year. We did nearly 50% in return. We made about 93,000 this year. So I mean, if we just do 10% next year, we'll get another 30,000. So I'm quite excited about uh, next year. So if you have suggestions of uh, other small cap stocks that are not already in this portfolio or that I'm overlooking, uh, let me know. So in terms of activity for November, this is what we've been up to. Um, right at the end of October, I think we bought some uh, Teladoc shares here. So I was uh, trapped in this covered call for Upwork. So I had to uh, give up some of those covered calls. So that's why you see some activity around Upwork here and here and here as well. And I bought a few more Teladoc shares on 9th uh, November. So this is the activity involving Upwork. Uh, yeah, then I sold uh, the S&P 500. Uh, I probably won't be adding cash into this portfolio going forward. So I'm going to sell some stocks uh, to raise cash to buy new positions. So the S&P 500 index is probably one of the positions that I'm going to sell. Uh, probably Berkshire Hathaway as well. I bought Amwell. Amwell felt quite a bit. Uh, I had a put option on Carnival. Uh, so I closed that one. I bought some Baozun and I bought uh, Bitcoin. So these are the current uh, option contracts that we still have open. So I think most of them will close uh, in profit on 15 uh, Jan 2021. Except this one for Carnival, I'll probably take a loss of 1,200 plus. Uh, or even more if Carnival falls more in that time. And uh, i probably sell the S&P 500 uh, position to raise cash to cover this. And then I've been opening up uh, new put options for the next year. So that experience or that bad experience with Upwork, where I sold this cover call, but Upwork just skyrocketed up upwards, and I lost a lot of I lost uh, I think potential profits of about two thousand plus perhaps. So I'm becoming a bit more cautious about using covered calls in future. In any case, the only other stocks I have 100 shares of, I think, are Facebook and Under Armour. Under Armour, I'll probably get rid of uh, through a covered call. Uh, Facebook, I probably will use it very sparingly, I think. So, let's take a look at the monthly uh, comparison. So, we are beating the S&P 500, which did 13%. Uh, we are beating most of the indices, the VJT, IGM, and uh, Triple Q that has ranged between 36 to 46 uh, percent. Sorry, uh, 40 plus percent. 
um, the Baron Fifth Avenue Fund has done 46%. The Berkshire Focus Fund has done 81%. Uh, the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust has done 89%. And then look at this. The two ARC ETFs, the ARC Innovation uh, ETF uh, has done 124%. Um, the ARC Next Generation ETF has done 136%. What an amazing result. So, I mean, I've beaten some of the top fund managers, but I have really uh, not come close to uh, the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, Berkshire Focus, and the ARC ETFs. So, for the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust and the ARC ETFs, there's been one clear stock that has driven their returns. That stock is uh, Tesla. And Tesla is a stock that I missed out on. Um, I think in the past, I was uh, scared Tesla would go bankrupt. I was a bit dismissive of Elon Musk. Um, I didn't really see a moat in terms of electric cars. Um, and I think I was also a bit dismissive of uh, Kathy Wood when I heard her first speak about her Tesla price target. I'm not saying that uh, Tesla deserves its uh, current valuation. I don't think it really deserves its current valuation either. But I think I'll be a bit more... Um, cautious now in uh, you know looking up some of these top fund managers and paying more attention to some of their picks and uh, analyzing it further uh, and not being too keen to uh, or too quick to dismiss some of these ideas so i think tesla has uh, gone uh, above the kind of uh, valuation that i'm looking for and in any case, it's become like a large cap, mega cap stock. And like I said before, I'm trying to avoid those stocks right now. So, but I hope to pick up the, the next Tesla, the next Shopify, uh, the next Amazon. So, it'd be very interesting to see how the ARC ETFs do next year. Uh, they won't have, I don't think at least they'll have the strong tailwind of a Tesla stock next year. So, it'll be interesting to see how they do uh, next year. But whatever it is, I'm going to pay very atten very close attention to the ARK ETFs. i am become a fan of uh, Cathy Wood. I've watched a lot of interviews of her and she is a very smart, analytical woman. So, uh, I mean, whether you agree with some of her picks or not, I think that there's definitely a foundation to them. Uh, even Bitcoin was something that she has been uh, supporting and this actually quite a bit of logic to it and that's actually one of the reasons why I decided to finally pick up a few Bitcoin uh, uh, shares so that I can get more skin in the game as well. So I mean let's look at how uh, the ARG ETFs do next year. Um, let's see and if they keep beating me you know trouncing me then maybe I should just be investing more in the ARG ETFs. So I'm going to monitor that closely. What do you think about uh, all these uh, ETFs and funds? How is your portfolio done? What do you think of the uh, performance of Project 1 million? Let me know your comments and thoughts in the comment uh, section below. Please help to support this channel. Uh, you can also join my fund on eToro if you're interested. Uh, feel free to ask any questions and I'll do my best. To help you and myself in this long-term investing journey. I think it's important to learn from mistakes so while 2020 has been a good year for me it'll be good to learn from some of the mistakes and hopefully we'll do even better next year and in the coming years. Thank you for your time.